Hello, today we are going to discuss COVID-19 laboratory tests, what and when, the perfect balance. There are many tests available in the diagnosis and management of COVID-19. This presentation will throw light on what test and when to use in a perfect balance. We will see the presentation. There are many laboratory tests available and we are classifying based on different criteria. One criteria is called purpose of the test. Number one, diagnosis. So first we need to confirm the disease. For that we are using confirmatory tests, diagnosis purpose. Second thing, prognosis to know the status of the disease. This is one criteria. Another criteria based on the disciplines. So different disciplines are there. One is microbiology, hematology comes under pathology and biochemistry. So we have different disciplines and different tests. So just we have an overview. So what are all the tests which fall under which, which discipline? See here, this is the test and panel. These are the disciplines micro, hematology and biochemistry. These are the test. Number one, RT-PCR, the scope is under microbiology. Antigen antibody test, the scope is under microbiology. And complete blood count, prothrombin time, this and all comes under hematology. Other important thing, inflammatory markers and routine tests like LFT, blood glucose, uh, liver function test, electrolytes, all comes under biochemistry. And already told inflammatory markers like CRP, LDH, ferritin, albumin, creatinine, kinase, procalcitonin, troponin, all comes under biochemistry. It is not uh, mandated, these all should fall in the particular discipline. Many places in that cut overlap. For example, uh, IgG antibody, blood bank also they are doing. For the recruitment of plasma donors, it is done in blood bank. So like that interleukin 6, it should be comes under uh, biochemistry as well as microbiology. So a lot of overlapping will be there. Next is, it is very important to balance. We need to balance two things before choosing a test in the management of COVID-19. Number one, clinical features. Based on the clinical feature, we need to choose a test. For example, inflammatory markers. If the patient is not having any fever or any uh, symptoms, there is no need to repeat or go for inflammatory markers. So based on the clinical picture, we need to choose the test. Number two, based on the time, it's very important. For example, uh, three weeks of symptoms, there is no use of doing RT-PCR. Or patient comes with a day one of fever, no use of doing IgG antibody. So you need to know the basic time, at what time, which test is ideal. And second thing, which clinical condition, which test we need to choose. And third one is guideline. So we need to balance these three things. One is the guideline, another one is the clinical picture, for that we need to know about the pathogenesis of the disease and third one is time. So with this combination, we need to balance now. See this interesting slide. In this slide, the bottom line is days from onset of symptoms. When the symptom is started onset, that is called day one. From that, I made it 15 days. Usually the symptom will appear fifth day of the infection after one week. So the 15 days means almost three weeks. Okay. And here a panel of tests. Now we are going to match in a perfect way. Day one, the patient comes, suspected case of COVID, go for RT-PCR. That's the first test, nasopharyngeal swab. Next, protein, complete blood count, LFT, RFT, glucose, electrolytes. That is mandatory. And if the patient is very severe symptoms like breathlessness, then you can suspect cytokine storm or any complication. Go for inflammatory markers like CRP, LDH, ferritin, albumin and D-dimer and interleukin-6 also depending upon the severity. This is day one. Next is day five, you can go for CT chest to know the involvement of lung and X-ray. Next, CBC is mandated, day five. Apart from that, 
you can go for inflammatory markers d dimer and crpck all those things suppose the day one if the patient is rt pcr negative you can repeat rt pcr on fifth day it is only for the negative case day one negative you can repeat next is if the patient is admitted he is symptomatic you should repeat the inflammatory markers every two days every two days the inflammatory markers should be done because it's an ideal tool to predict the cytokine storm and many other complications next is day 8 you can go for interleukin 6 if the patient is symptomatic day 1 we are doing otherwise day 8 is very crucial to do one interleukin 6 next is chest x-ray after the CT once in 3 days it should not exit maximum 4 times because to reduce the radiation exposure chest x-ray to monitor no need to repeat CT again chest x-ray once in 3 days we need to take next is 8 to 12 days we need to go for ECG or echo based on the finding we can order troponin to evaluate the cardiac damage 8 to 12 days comfortably one day we can choose for ECG and echo next is in case if we give steroids so sepsis if you find any focal point of sepsis then go for procalcitonin anytime to rule out the sepsis or pneumonia bacterial pneumonia go for procalcitonin next is if you are giving steroids especially diabetic or steroid treatment itself we can go for blood sugar every day every day blood sugar we need to repeat or antiviral drug like remdesivir liver function test we need to do once in three days every third day we need to repeat the liver function test only if the patient is under antivirals or any abnormal liver function test on day one we need to find out the cause so these are all the balancing of available laboratory test in the management of covid suppose antibody test when to do antibody test after three weeks do igg if it is positive it shows convalescent stage and also he is eligible if it is more than 1 in 640 he is eligible for plasma donation plasma donation so based on this see this picture one size doesn't fit for all like that one criteria or one protocol you cannot treat all the patient with the same protocol so every patient you see the patient based on the clinical condition based on the time and based on the available guidelines evidence you can do a tailor-made protocol a tailor-made treatment for every patient without violating the general protocol it does not mean that introduce a new test or introduce a new uh, drug it's not like that all available drugs all available tests okay and available clinical condition you need to change the combination you need to change the combination according to the situation that's the message so with this i'll go to the take home message number one many tests available in different disciplines we have seen biochemistry microbiology hematology like that second the covid 19 it has various clinical manifestations as well as complications different complication various manifestations so it is very important before choosing a test you need to understand about the test and we need to correlate with clinically clinical correlation and understanding of the test is very very essential we need to justify why i am choosing the test what i am expecting the result if the result comes positive and what may be my management like that we must have some mindset next very very important choose the balanced combination of tests which are ideal for management of the individual many places i am seeing the advertisements <coughs> covid package we are doing all the tests d dimer and cbc interleukin 6 antibody all on same day is it advisable no d dimer not necessary for everyone IgG not necessary for everyone but we are having the package it's called package 
how can the day one the patient become uh, positive for rt pcr and the patient become uh, positive for igg i don't know what combination it is the take home message use a balanced combination which is, should be justifiable so hope this presentation throw some light on what test when to use thanks for watching the video and subscribe me in microsuria online see you with an elaborate laboratory test soon thanks again